say Iran did it? Iran says they didn't. What do you make of the video that we've seen? Well, you know, there's very few suspects in this situation. And it's important to remember, back during the original tanker wars in 1987 and 1988, Iran also regularly denied interfering in shipping. And that lie turned out to, um, I mean, that lie was exposed when the U.S. at that time found video or shot video of Iran actually laying mines. And it's not clear that the Iranians actually know what the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy is up to. The Islamic mm -hmm. Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy has a new commander, so all traditional red lines are being reestablished right now. Mm. I, I guess the other thing that people had said was, why would they attack a Japanese tanker when Abe was meeting with the Ayatollah? But there's, it, it's not necessarily clear that they knew it was a Japanese tanker, right? Well, first of all, it's not clear they knew it was a Japanese tanker. And oftentimes, if these operations are going to be put in play, they're going to be put in play before necessarily the guys on the ground, the guys in the speedboat, know who the Supreme Leader is going to be meeting with. And what, what seems to be the case, both in this instance and a couple weeks ago, when you had those episodes off Fujairah, the main oil export port in the United Arab Emirates, is that... Um, the Iranians seem to be targeting third, third country nationals. Look, if they targeted U.S. ships, that would be a huge deal. That would bring us into immediate conflict. If they target European vessels and Asian vessels, what they may be trying to do is divide America's allies from the United States. It would seem that this would only make uh, some of the allies maybe come down a little more harshly against Iran if this is the case, no? Well, you never know, because in the past, when the Iran has acted harshly, the Europeans, for example, have met that by trying to ameliorate Iran, by mm. trying to win them over with concessions, rather than by taking a harder line. So mm. Iran may be taking a gamble here. Concessions the difference will, is, yeah. Uh, just concessions that will stop bombing your, your tankers? Well, ultimately, look, I mean, the, the Germans, for example, and the European Union more broadly, had this notion called critical engagement in which they triple trade with Iran um, between 1998 and 2005. At the same time, the price of oil quintupled. They thought that they were going to roll Iran into the international community and moderate it in that way. In reality, about 70 percent of Iran's hard currency windfall went into its ballistic missile program and at the time its covert nuclear program. So sometimes the Europeans miscalculate in this. Michael, I'm not sure you know the answer to this, but you did reference the tanker wars from the late 80s uh, when you actually had uh, naval ships uh, acting as, uh, you know, protecting some of those tankers that were going through the Straits of Hormuz. That was when the Iranians and the Iraqis were fighting. What happened then to oil prices, and what do you think the impact of something like that would, would be today? Well, ultimately... Um, what happened was Operation Praying Mantis, and that, that temporarily shot oil prices up. Operation Praying Mantis, after a U.S. ship, a U.S. reflag ship hit a mine, what happened was we went after some of Iran's oil terminals. The Iranians chose to fight back, and it was the largest surface naval engagement since World War II. That created a spike in oil. Now, the thing to understand about Iran is their fiscal year goes from March 21st to March 20th, and since they are so dependent on oil, they have to guess what, their, what the price of oil is going to be in order to set their budget. If the wow. price of oil falls below that, they're in trouble. If the price of oil goes above that, then they have some more money to play around with. When and you, oil prices were down 4% the day before this attack. Right. When you engage in this sort of thing, the price of oil shoots up. Um, traditionally, you have the price of insurance increasing. And remember, while Iran is under tremendous sanctions right now, uh, the so-called maximum pressure campaign, for whatever oil they do sell, they, they sell it at significant discount, below market prices, in order to attract people to bust the sanctions. And so what the Iranians are trying to do is raise the price of oil. Uh, whether or not they close the Strait of Hormuz, they can't really do that militarily, but they do want to bump the price of oil up uh, to punish the rest of the world and also to basically make sure that they don't operate too, too far into the red. So what should the United States do in response? Well, ultimately... What we're in a situation, look, you have a new head of the Iranian Navy, a new head of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, and the new head of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps itself, all within the last 18 months. And so they're not used to operating with us. I do think it's essentially important to establish new red lines here, if only to maintain the peace. We don't want to get into a situation where we descend into a war which, as CENTCOM has said, and as the Supreme Leader has said, and as Donald Trump has said, no one really wants.